is the word of God. This is the word of God. I love the word of God. I love, I love the, the word, word of God. God. The word of God will work in my life. The word of God will work in my life. But I must study and work the word. But I must study and work the word. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's pray. Father God, we come to you in the precious, holy, and righteous name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Father. Lord, we just magnify yes. and glorify your holy yes. and your righteous yes. name. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, for Thanks. this time Thanks. where we Thanks. sit mm. in our tent doors and hear a word from you. Yes, Lord. Lord God, we have came, we have worshiped, we have praised, and now, Lord God, we need for you to minister yes. to our hearts yes. and our minds. Thank you. Thank you. In faith, Lord, we sit here and we receive yes. what thus says yes. the Lord. Yes. Yes. In faith, Lord, I now release myself to the leading and the guiding of thy precious Holy Spirit so that everything that is done and everything that is said will be for your honor, your glory, and your praise. In the wonderful name of Jesus, my soul says, Amen. 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 Turn back into the Bibles to the Gospel of John. We're not going to read the entirety, but we're going to read three verses. So if you go back in your Bibles to the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 3 only. Yeah. Amen. God, uh, uh, John, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Thank you, Jesus. Is Katrina still here? She's in the back. Oh, good, because I need to her. Okay. John 12, 1 to 3. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Nazareth was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Amen. Amen. Those of you who have been in the Word of God for any length of time, you all know this story, and you know how close our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ was to this particular family. Yeah. It was not unusual for Jesus to go to their home and have dinner. And as he did on this occasion, it seemed like every time he came for dinner, he brought his 12 disciples with him. Amen. And if you all know the story before of the last time that he did that, how Martha was all upset and running around and trying to get everything prepared. And Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus listening to his teaching and Martha got a little bit upset with her, her sister. Well, this time it's uh, some of the same thing, but scripture doesn't say that Martha says anything to Jesus, uh, Mary at all about not helping her with the preparation. The one thing that I want you to know about this story, and I need to give you the background before I can get into the message, is scripture says that this Lazarus that um, Jesus went to his house is the very same Lazarus that he had raised from the dead. I believe that this was the last contact that Jesus had with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus before this particular occasion. I believe the last contact that Jesus had with them was when Lazarus was in the grave and Mary and Martha were standing, or they had sent for her, and then they were standing on the outside moaning and crying because uh, uh, Lazarus had died. I want you to understand that while Jesus is sitting there, all of a sudden Martha does something that seems very strange. And the reason that she does it, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is because of what I just said. I believe she did it because the last time she had been in Jesus' presence, 
she had seen him raise her brother from the dead. I want you to understand that Mary and Martha and Lazarus always believed that Jesus was somebody special. I want you to understand that they always believed that Jesus was a prophet, that he was a man of God. They also believed that he was a mighty miracle worker. They had a certain amount of faith in him, but they did not realize in totality just exactly who this was. man called Jesus right. was Amen. until that day. All because right. if any of you remember the story, you remember that they had, uh, Mary and Martha had sent for Jesus, and, and Jesus waited four days before uh -huh. he showed up. Yeah. And when he got there, the first thing Mary and Martha did was run out to him and shook their bony finger in his <laughs> face and said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I want you to understand that they believed that he had power to keep Lazarus from dying. But they didn't know that he had power to bring Lazarus back after he died. I want you to understand that there was a changing in the way that they thought about Jesus. There was a changing in the way that they had that they knew Jesus. So this time when Jesus comes to the house and he's sitting there at the meal with the, the men and so on and so forth, Mary goes and she gets a jar of ointment. Okay, really it was solid perfume. Scripture says that that jar of ointment was worth a whole year's wages. Amen. I want you to understand how expensive this ointment was. And Mary goes up to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and she kneels down and she starts to anoint his feet with the ointment. Yeah. Then scripture says she takes the oil and she, uh, uh, thank you Lord, she takes her hair and she starts to dry his feet with his hair. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't think you understand what is going on here because, first of all, no respectable woman would ever take her hair down in public. All right. It is important that you realize that. It is important for you to get that in order to get the message that God is going to give you this morning. But the first thing that you need to see is the fact that Mary let down her hair in the presence of all these men. And no respectable woman would ever do that. What was the message that was going from there? Amen? The next thing that you need to ask yourself, the question is, why in the world did Mary anoint his feet and not his head? I want you to think about that. I want you to think about Psalms 23 when David was praying and he said he anointed my head with oil. Okay, why did Mary anoint his feet and not anoint his hair? And what was the significance of her taking her hair and drying his feet. Right. Have you ever asked yourself that question? God does nothing without having a meaning behind it. Right. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to understand that when Mary did this, some people said that she did it to show her great love for Almighty God that she did this to show her great love for our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And while I agree with that, I definitely agree with that. I believe that Mary did this for another reason. Uh -huh. And I believe that Mary did this because she was being led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You say, Pastor, what difference it? It makes all the difference in the world. Amen. Mary Amen. anointed Jesus' feet and not his head. Why? Because she was led to do that by the Holy Spirit. Why? What difference does it make? I want you to understand where God tells us in Ephesians about blessed are the feet of those who go out and, and spread the beautiful are the feet. Yes. Because uh, I tell people all the time, I might have bunions, but I got beautiful feet. Amen. Okay, I might have cords here and there, and a toe might look like a hammer, but I got some beautiful feet. Amen. Because God said beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I want you to understand that she anointed his his feet 
because she was, God was symbolizing through her that he was preparing Jesus for the road that he was getting ready to travel. Yes, right. I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters in Christ, you have got to get this yes. because it's only yes. six days from now, six days from this dinner that he's having with them, six days later, he is going to be hanging on the cross and God is preparing his feet yes. to take that road that rough road and not turn back. I want you to know that God did not anoint his head because his mind did not need to be prepared to go. His mind was already fixed. His mind was fixed. His mind was made up. Scripture said his face was set like flint that he was going to go to Jerusalem and he was going to do exactly what God had told him to do. But God says, I've got to prepare him physically yes. for this hard room. Yes. i got to anoint yes. his feet yes. that even though his mind is saying go on, each time he takes a footstep, that his feet say no, uh -uh, we don't want to go there. <laughs> we want to turn around and go a different direction. But God had his feet yes. anointed, symbolizing yes. that yes. God was strengthening yes. him to travel on the room that he was going to have to travel on. Yes. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to understand yes. that God also did this to teach you a lesson. Uh -huh. What is the lesson that God wants you, to, uh, wants you to learn? God wants you to learn that there are some roads that he has prepared for you, and some of the roads are rocky, some of the roads are steep, yeah. some of the roads are rough, yeah. some of the roads are in hard terrain, yeah. some of the roads are in difficult places, and he wants you to have that same anointing that yeah. Jesus had in order to make it clear. Brothers and sisters of Christ, you gotta, you got to get this because scripture says when she anointed Jesus' feet that the whole house, amen, was filled with its fragrance, which means that everybody there could smell the uh, aroma and everybody there was influenced by the aroma. Well, God is saying that when she was anointing his feet, that God is saying to you this morning that he wants to anoint you as well. I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters in Christ, not only do you have rough roads that you're going to have to travel, and the only way that you're going to be able to make it through is when you are operating under the anointing of Almighty God. I want you to remember that God says in his word, it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. Brothers and sisters in Christ, some of you in here are yoked down with some things that you don't have no business being yoked with, whether it's habits or lifestyles or whatever. God says, in order for there to be deliverance, there has got to be an anointing on your life. And I want you to understand, we sing that song, anointing, fall on me, anoint. You think the anointing is just to make you feel good. You think the anointing is just to make you say hallelujah and do a little dance. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the anointing is for service and the anointing is for worship. Amen. The anointing is for service and the anointing is for worship. And God is saying this morning that he wants to anoint some of you all, not only on your feet, but he wants to anoint you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet because yes. he has a work yes. for you, you to do. do. Yes. Yes. Amen. But yes. that yoke, Amen. that yoke that Amen. you're tied up with, Amen. that yoke that keeps Thank you separate you. from God. Thank you, that yoke that makes you think, well, everybody does something. Uh -huh. God said that yoke has got to be broken. Yeah. And the only way the yoke can be broken is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It is Thank the anointing, Thank the anointing of God. Yeah. My question to you is this morning, are you anointed? I get so sick of hearing people tell me, oh, pastor, you're so anointed. Or is that supposed to be a strange thing? Because you're supposed to be just as anointed as I am. Yeah, that's right, Lord. Do you understand? God says in his word that he shows no favoritism, right. that he doesn't right. uh, give me something that he said. We may have a different calling. 
Amen. Not calling us to be a pastor. Your calling may be something else, but it's the same anointing. Yes. 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 Amen. Do you understand that? Amen. It's the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit in your life yes. that will break the yoke. Amen. When Mary took the ointment and anointed Jesus' feet with it, it said that everybody could smell it and everybody could uh, was influenced by it. That means that the anointing of God is supposed to be so strong in your life that every time somebody sees you, Amen. that they can smell it. Amen. They can smell it. Do you remember when, um, what was her name, Esther? When she was being prepared for queen. Yeah. Remember yeah. when they moved Vashti because yeah. Vashti acted up? Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you know it took a whole year for them to prepare the woman's body before she could be presented to the king? Mm -hmm. Six months she had to soak in oil. Six months she had to soak in myrrh, myrrh and incense and perfume. It took a solid year to prepare a woman's body so that she didn't have to spray cologne on every morning. It would seep from her pores. Wow. Do you understand that? Amen. Just to present her to a man. Uh -huh. Just to give it to a man now. God says he wants you to be so seep and so saturated in the Holy Spirit that the smell of God on your life will just ooze out. And no matter where you are or who you come in contact, you'll be able to smell the sweet smelling fragrance of being in God's presence. The anointing fall on you. The anointing. God had her anoint his feet for service because he was getting ready to do the greatest service for us that anyone could ever do and that was to die to give us eternal life the anointing is for service the anointing is for worship Mary was worshiping at the feet of Jesus but remember we asked about the hair. Why the hair? Why wipe his feet with her hair? Come on, she took the bottom of her robe. I would like to see, I probably would have used the robe, don't you think? Why take her hair? Especially when a woman's hair is supposed to be her most beautiful and prized yes. possession. That's why y'all go to the beautician every other week and all that kind of stuff. That's why we put on wigs and all this. Is we want to have this look with our hair. Why would she take her hair? Because her hair, when she let her hair down. Remember I told you no respectable woman would do that, right? Uh -huh. she, when she was letting her hair down through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God was, God was symbolizing uh -huh. you cannot care what society thinks about you yes. when you worship God. Amen. 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 Do you get that? Because no respectable woman. So if she's going to be worried about society, she never would have took her hand. God said, when you are a child of the king, uh -huh. you cannot be concerned about how society is going to look at you or how they're going to talk about you or they're going to say, relationship to God is supposed to be more important to you yes. than anybody and anything else. The anointing. But the other reason that she used her hair was because she was saying in effect through the power of the Holy Spirit I'm willing to sacrifice my prized possession yes. for your use. Yes. I'm willing to sacrifice my most prized possession for your use. I've given up a whole year's wages. That don't mean nothing to me to be at your feet. Can you imagine being at the feet of Jesus? She would say, a year's wages. I don't have to be concerned about my wages and my pay because the one I'm worshiping is going to supply all my needs. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
I don't have to be concerned about what society is going to say about me because I let down my hair. Because God tells me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Lord God, I'm willing to relinquish to you my most prized possession. I'm not going to hold anything back from your service and for your use. Your use. What's his name? Judas. Got an attitude. You know we read that earlier. Why you use this and, and put the whiteness on his feet and because you know, Judas, Judas doesn't have the foggiest idea who Jesus is. He walked with you. I'm so sick. Oh, Lord, I, I don't want to start. For three and a half years, he walked and talked and ate and slept with Jesus, and he still didn't, didn't know, know who he was. was. Amen. So many people sit inside the church week after week after week after week, after week and still don't have the foggiest Amen. idea Amen. of who Amen. Jesus is. Yes, yes, yes. Emotions don't count. Amen. 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 Said, Why didn't you just sell this and, and give the money <laughs> to the poor? You know, come on, man. I mean, I'm the, I'm the treasure. I mean, you know, the scripture said he was the thief. He yeah. was still the money. But the thing that I want you to understand was that Jesus told them, He said, What she's doing, she doesn't realize it, but she's anointing me for my greatest sacrifice. Yes, yes. She yes. has anointed me yes. for my day, for my death. Yes. When I will give my life up mm -hmm. for each and every one of you. Mary anointed Jesus. God wants to anoint you this morning. Amen. He wants you to be anointed yes. through the power of the Holy Spirit. So that you will not simply say words when you're talking about loving God. Amen. But the Amen. words will be followed Amen. by your actions. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Thank you, Father God. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Most holy. Most holy and all wise, Father. Oh, Lord, I don't know why I doubt you. Amen. There just seemed to be so much confusion this morning. I said, Lord, where? What? What? But, Lord, you do what you always do. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Because it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know what yoke anybody has in here this morning. But anything that is separating us from each other is the yoke. Because remember, God said you can't come to me until you come to your brother and make things right with him. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, I ask that your power to fill this place and to fill each and every person that is here. Saving, healing, and delivering in the name of Jesus.